folks, this is Damien with Best Care. The purpose of this video is to help you identify what type of Best Care electronics you have on your patient lift, as well as to identify what type of actuator you have on your patient lift. So what I'm going to be describing today are three styles of electronics that mount on your patient lift, or four styles of actuator motors that mount on your patient lift. Now the electronics package is the battery, the hand controls, the chargers, you know, the things that power up your lift to make it function. The actuators are actually the motors that make the lift go up and down. So let's start off with style one. Style one looks like a big square box with all the buttons on the side and the emergency stop button at the top. Style one can be identified quite easily when you notice that the charger is a black charger that actually requires an adapter to plug into the control box to charge it. So if you have a black charger, a control box that's a complete square, then you know you have the first style of Best Care Electronics. The second style of electronics has a little bit different functions on it. The emergency stop button is in the front of the control box and the battery actually removes from the control box. Because with this style, you can actually buy a wall-mounted battery charger to charge a separate battery for your patient lift. So you can actually have two batteries for the patient lift, one charging, one on the lift, and switch them out at any time. But you can see that the second style has a distinct look to it. That's how you would identify that style. Now the third style looks similar to this, except the emergency stop button is on the top, the battery removes, but the battery, as you can see, looks quite a bit different than style two. You also have the option of plugging the lift into the wall to charge it, or a wall-mounted charger or a desktop charger is available to charge a second battery on the third style of electronics. So now let's move over to the actuators and describe those. The first style of actuator that you may have looks like this. You notice there's nothing here at the top of it because this particular actuator does not have manual emergency lowering. The second style you may have has some little red tabs at the top of it. These are manual emergency lowering functions that when you squeeze it, it lowers the actuator down to lower it without power. The third style you may have has a red knob on the top. That red knob is turned to lower the actuator down. And the very last style has a knob that turns on the top, but you have to actually pull down on it when you turn it. And that would be the fourth style. So hopefully, after reviewing this video, you will understand what style of electronics and actuator you have. Hey folks, Damien here with Best Care. I'm here to describe how to troubleshoot your Style 1 electronics. So you can see here that we have everything kind of plugged into the system right now so we can run it. So you can kind of see how this would work when it was on your lift. The control box has the actuator plugged into it, the hand control. So when we hit the up button, you're going to see this motor go up and down, just as like if it was on your patient lift and down. Now with the Style 1 electronics, you can see here that we have actuator plugged into one spot, hand control plugged into the spot right above it, and then right above that is the charging port that will actually charge the batteries. Style 1 electronics typically has an adapter that plugs in first, a charger that plugs into the wall, and then an end that plugs into the adapter to charge up the battery. This particular style of system requires you to plug the thing in whenever you're not using it. So that's the best advice I can give you to keep the battery charging. Keep it plugged in whenever you're not using it. When you plug it into the wall, you'll see at the very top here that all the lights will light up on the display, indicating that it's charging. So what happens if you went ahead and plugged this thing into the wall and the lights didn't show up? What could be wrong? Well, a couple of things. The adapter could be bad. If this is broken, you're not going to get power to charge it up. Another possibility could be 
the charger. And don't forget, if the emergency stop button is pressed in, the lift won't charge. Or last, the actual PCB inside of the unit could be bad. So the best way to isolate the problem is to first plug the charger directly into the port, see if the lights show up. If they don't, then you probably have a bad PCB in the unit. So that's just some recommendations on the charging of the system. So once we have all the system connected, charged up and ready to work, and you're ready to run the lift, and you hit the up button, and if nothing happens, what could be wrong? Well, the first thing to check would be the hand control. If you're pushing the up and down buttons and the light at the top that, that shows when it's charging doesn't light up just like it did before when you had it plugged in, you don't see those lights come on, then the chances are you have a bad hand control. Now, if for some reason you replace the hand control and you go to do the same thing again and the lights don't show up, then more than likely what you have in, is a bad PCB on the unit. And I'll be showing you that here a little bit later. So, as we mentioned earlier, this system has to be plugged in to charge. If you're not plugging it in to charge it and keeping it charged, you're going to kill the batteries and need to replace them. The batteries are really quite easy to replace in the unit. You've got two tabs that are located on the control box that you can squeeze and just lift the cover off. And inside, you see the batteries. There are two individual battery cells that are wired together. These batteries are available from Best Care or your dealer, or sometimes they're available locally. The batteries are probably the number one reason the system fails. But it's very easy to have access to them. You can remove them really easily as well. So you can see, we can take these right out. You can also see when I have them out, you have a red wire and a black wire and then a white wire, because the red wire connects to one side of the red terminal on the battery. The black wire connects to one side of the black terminal on the other battery, and the white wire connects to the red and black to complete the series. If I wanted access to the PCB on the system, I'd remove all the plugs, and I would remove the bolts here, and I could lift the cover off, and you would see the PCB resting right inside of the control box. So it's quite easy to remove it if you needed to replace it or exchange it. One of the most common things we find with this system is when you get the brand new unit, you put it all together, it's just straight out of the box and something isn't working, more than likely the culprit is the actuator plug. When we plug the actuator into the unit, there's certainly times where it doesn't fit as easily as we'd like, so you want to make sure and push it in hard enough where you do not see any space between the rim on the actuator and the control box. Because if it's not plugged in all the way, your lift's not going to work. It's the most common reason a person complains about the lift not working out of the box. So check that actuator cable. So now you have a better understanding how to troubleshoot Style 1 electronics. Hey folks, Damien with Best Care. The purpose of this video is to help you troubleshoot your Style 2 Best Care Electronics. So we talked about Style 2 before. You remember that it has a control box. Looks like this. If everything was hooked up and functioning properly, on your lift, we'd hit the up button, motor would go up, down button, and motor would go down. So let's break down each of these individual components and talk about some of the ways to troubleshoot them. And let's start with the battery. As you know, the Style 2 Electronics has a removable battery. The battery does have a, a gauge on it that you can push to tell you how much power is in the battery. Of course, the best reading would be with the gauge showing all four bars. You can see this has two bars, so it's a little low. At the bottom of the battery, there's two tabs. Those tabs are actually making contact with the control box. That's how power is going to the lift. So the connection between those tabs is really important for us to get power to the actuator and make the control box run the lift. Now, what if our battery isn't working? What if there's, there's some reason there's a problem? Well, when you push this button and get a reading, that doesn't necessarily mean that the battery has the power to run the lift. The only way you can truly test the battery is by putting the battery under a load of some sort and seeing if the battery maintains 
24 volts when you're running under load. So it's a good indication to see when the lights are lit up, but if you put the system together and try and run it and the lift makes some beeping noises, still doesn't go up and down, I would advise that you take the battery to a qualified technician somewhere that could put it under load and test it because the batteries are probably the number one reason the lift stopped working. So let's assume we got a good battery. We're going to connect it to the control box. And you can see inside the control box we got a couple of metal tabs. That's what the battery is going to rest against when we put it together. And you should hear a little snapping noise when you click the battery into the control box because that connection is really important. So everything's connected and now you can see that on the display we have a symbol of a battery showing how much power is in the battery. That's a good indication that we're making a good connection between the control box and the battery. And you also see a green light, meaning that the battery is connected. So what happens if all that is connected and we go to run the lift with the hand control and it still doesn't go up and down? Well at that point I would advise that we go to the auxiliary switches that are on the control box to see if those run the lift up and down. And if they do, then you got a bad hand control. Hand controls are probably the second main reason the lifts fail, because they do get dropped and the cords get broken. Now, let's say we got a brand new lift, we're putting everything together, and we can't get the lift to run, just straight out of the box. What could be the problem? The two things that I would check right off the bat would be, does the battery connected properly to show that we have power? And is the actuator cable plugged in to the control box properly and snugly? There's many times where this isn't plugged in all the way, nothing will work on your lift. So that is another important thing to check when you're assembling your lift. And since we're on the uh, bottom of the uh, control box describing some of those features, you can kind of see that there's three different sets of holes here and a hole on the side at the bottom of the control box. Well, of course, one's for the hand control, one's for the actuator. This one is used for nothing. It's blank on this system. And then the last one is for the charging cord. Style 2 Electronics allows you to plug the lift in and charge it. So we have a special cord that plugs in to the control box and then plugs into the wall. So your lift straight out of the box can charge by just plugging it into the wall and charging up the system. I sh brought a wall mounted charger to show you. This is what that looks like if you decided to buy that and how it would mount on the wall. Just hang it up and the battery slips into it just like the control box. The same charging cable that's used to charge the lift would plug into the bottom of the wall charger to charge your secondary battery. So now, hopefully you have a better idea how to troubleshoot your Style 2 electronics.